is to, welcome to Concord United Methodist Church online Zoom service. Let's open our hearts, minds, and soul to prepare to worship our gracious Lord. Please join us for the responsive reading. Lord, we come today to worship in prayer and supplication. Answer our prayers, O oh God. Help us. You've done it before and you'll do it again. You've helped us before and you'll help us again. Save us, O oh God. This has happened before and will happen again. We are trapped. We are attacked. We are sorry for ourselves. But then we remember who we are to you. We remember how you work in us and through us. And so we praise you now as we have praised you before and will praise you again. For you are Lord and you are good and we am yours. We are yours in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Our next hymn, our first hymn is Guide me, O oh thou great Jehovah. Our missions and ministries. Heifer Bikeathon number 44, September 19. Warm up is Saturday, September 12. A virtual gift fair to raise funds for Heifer. Riders pick 25 or 50 mile distance. Set your own riding pace. Any questions? Sign up. Contact Vince Gregory. Be ready to sponsor riders and contribute freely. Marge Boyer Memorial Service, September 4th at 10 a.m., Memorial Garden Cemetery, 2011 Arnold Industrial Way in Concord. 
gift cards are still available. You can contact Marilyn Robrecht and it's a perfect time to get that early Christmas shopping done. We've got tons and tons of gift cards. Thank you for joining for our online worship. There is a new surge of the COVID-19 in California. We care for the health and safety of our members. We are postponing our in-person worship until January 1st, 2021. Stay tuned as we may need to still be flexible. Followers of Christ small group meeting, last Saturday of every month, 5 to 7 p.m. place, Zoom. All the small group leaders are welcome. Please come and learn how to lead small groups and share your insights and worship God together. Sermon in a nutshell. Would you like to receive a copy of the sermon in a nutshell? Let Pastor Lee or Kathy Evans know. They can send it by email or regular mail. Unshakable Hope, small group for the 30s and 40s. Your next meeting is today at 3 p.m. via Zoom. If you want to join, give Pastor Lee your email address. We are now reading the book, Fearless. Trust God more and fear less. Want to review a movie or a book? Pastor Lee is looking for people to share their insight on a movie or book. You will answer three questions. What is the content of the book or movie? Where did you find God in there? What would be an appropriate scripture that goes well with your insight? If you are interested, please contact Pastor Lee at rev.sungholee at gmail.com. We need photos. Please continue to send Sandy pictures of your activities. We will share them during future services. Would you like to honor a current or former, former CUMC member? Please send pictures of those too. We would love to show all of the good work that our members have done. Send in prayer requests. If you have a prayer request that you want to read aloud online service, please send it to Pastor Lee before 9 a.m. each Saturday. Today's anthem is I Lift Mine Eyes. We found this recording from 2012 sung in our own sanctuary. It's sung by Doug Amy and accompanied by his wife, Darlene, and her daughters, Corrine and Melanie, on flute. Uh, as a singer, I'm all about the voice. And as I listen to this, Doug is so engaged and his voice is so connected that I found myself kind of tearing up. And as I watched that whole family presenting the music together, it made me realize how lucky we were to have them in our church family. The words that you should pay attention to are, he will not let you stumble, he will not let you fall. The Lord is your keeper. The sun will not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep your life. I lift up mine eyes to the hills and I wonder, I wonder where is my help. <laughs>
spiritual gifts to worship with you this morning. And we just want to thank uh, Doug and his family for that. That is, that was magnificent. And they live among us in our, in our church family. And so do you, even during this virtual time, we are a family. And so because we can't get up and hug each other like we would or shake each other's hands or look into each other's eyes, we can still pass the peace to let each other know that we still care and are thinking and praying and love one another. So how we do that is we say, peace, be with you. Peace, be with you. Peace, be with you. And give yourself a big hug mm -mm -mm -mm, and know that it comes from CUMC and God bless you. Our scripture reading is Psalm 70, verses 1 through 5. Hasten, O God, to save me. Come quickly, Lord, to help me. May those who want to take my life be put to shame and confusion. May all who desire my ruin be turned back in disgrace. May those who say to me, aha, aha, turn back because of their shame. But may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who long for your saving help always say, the Lord is great. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come quickly to me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer. Lord, do not delay. May God give understanding and wisdom to his word. Our next hymn is Out of the Depths. Thank you. 
this Psalm, Psalm 70, that we read today is David's prayer. David was in a desperate situation many times in his life. Every time when he felt powerless, he prayed. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me, O Lord. Make haste to help me. Let those be put to shame and confusion who seek my life. Let those be turned back and brought to dishonor who desire to hurt me. The reason why David kept praying to God was his experience with God. God had saved him many times. And every time when he prayed, God answered him. When he experienced God's answer time and again, David's faith becomes stronger and stronger. Now his faith become unshakable. Now David could pray for others to have the same conviction that he had. Let those who say, aha, aha, turn back because of their shame. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say so evermore, God is great. But I am poor and needy. Hasten to me, O God. You are my help and my deliver, O oh Lord, do not delay. David's prayer was answered. Here now, our church member, Betty Prayer also can say the same thing. She will testify to it. So let's uh, invite and welcome Betty McLeod, and she will share her testimony as David did in the Bible. Betty, come. Thank you. Let those, oh, sorry. Hope in the world of despair. Matthew 6, 34. There does not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Isaiah 35, 4. Tell everyone who is discouraged, be strong and don't be afraid. God is coming to your rescue. When I was a young child, I read my Bible faithfully. It wasn't an easy read because it was the King James Version. But lots of lovely pictures. I loved all the stories, especially the ones about faith. And if you believe strong enough, you could move mountains. And not worrying about what tomorrow will bring because God will provide. And as a child, my faith was unshakable. I've loved what I read and, I what, and what our Lord promised for our lives. Don't misunderstand me. I also know that God told us we would have lows and, has, and highs, but no matter what, we would be walking with us, holding me while he went through my trials and giving me his unquestionable love. When I look back over my life, I do see and can see that God always was true to his word and never had forsaken me. There were times when we just had rice, milk, and sugar for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But someone all of a sudden came with food, and we would have food, and it was all good. We always knew that someone would come through and help out our family, and it was the angel that lived in Colorado. She was my mother's cousin and never had a family of her own, so she took our family under her wings, and when we needed help, she was there. And of course, as kids, we loved the fact that she would always send us birthday cards, and there was always a brand new dollar bill. It, seems, it didn't seem like a lot, but for us, when you have no money, it was like winning the lotto. My teenage years. In my teenage years, of course, I had some very difficult times. For me, I thought my life was ending when I lost my father. But the Lord knew different. He had plans for me. And my neighbors and other people that were around me, they helped me figure out what I was going to do. But the one that was guiding them was the Lord. He made them my angels at the time. I was blessed and I, in that I never really worried about tomorrow because I knew that through prayer and God being with me, no matter what challenge arrived, I could meet it with a positive attitude. I also knew that through him, almost anything could be accomplished. Didn't mean I wasn't going to be spared grief or hardship. I just knew it would be easier with the Lord in my life. People have always told me that I had a strong per I'm a strong person. Maybe that is how people perceive me, but I don't think that I'm that strong. 
I just have someone in my corner that helps me. I wouldn't have that strength or I wouldn't have that attitude if, if I was alone. But I am never alone. I daily walk with God. He sends me messages throughout my life. He has guided me in prayer and helped me accomplish dreams and hopes through all I do. Of course, this isn't a relationship that develops overnight. It is something that takes a lot of prayer and a lot of faith. It's a journey, a long journey, one that starts from the time you learn of Christ. But it is a wonderful journey, full of twists and turns and lows and highs, but it's a promise that, is, that he fulfills for us. I never wanted for things in my life. You would think I would have because I had so little. Yes, um, yes, so little material things, but rich in spiritual life. If we just let him take control of our lives and our futures and put our, all our decisions in his hands, then he, has more, then he is more than happy to help us get through. God knows before we, before we do what is going to take place, it doesn't mean <clears throat> it makes it happen, but he can foresee it. After all, he can create the universe and everything in it. Why wouldn't he be able to see what is to come? But it is up to us to make the right choices. Doug's illness and passing. I couldn't have told you when my husband was diagnosed with lung cancer how long he would have. Yes, the doctors, doctors gave us a time in the beginning, but it wasn't God's time. I was blessed to have him for almost seven years. Yes, there were a lot of procedures and a lot of chemos, etc. But there were also a lot of time to enjoy our time together in wonderful ways. Yes, I would rather have had more time with Doug, but I always have felt blessed that I had as much time as I did. Then the pandemic hit. So many people affected, out of work, businesses closed, still having to pay rents with no money coming in. But even then I had a landlord that was willing to work with me, but I was able to make rent, even though I couldn't charge my coworkers their rent. Because I was still, um, I was self-employed, we couldn't get employment. Then the government opened it up to us as well. So when I got the money, I could apply it to my rent and was able to pay the whole three months I was out. And in the beginning of July, my landlord gifted me with $1,745 because I was a good tenant and he wanted to give, it, give me a break, which I ended up applying for August, which came in very handy because we were closed back down. But it wasn't really the landlord or anybody else, but it was God providing again, because that is what he does, and that is what he promised. Stimulus check. So because I went back to work, I closed my unemployment and have to reopen it. So no more money again. But I have been waiting for my stimulus check since they first started sending them now out. Well, guess what? God came through. I got my check, and so I'm good again. It isn't a coincidence. Oh, is it a coincidence or is it the Lord? Well, I choose to believe that he has been carrying me in his arms throughout my whole life. Do I wonder why he is so good to me, knowing that I am a sinner and that I fall very short of being Christ-like? Well, it doesn't matter to God that I am a sinner. Otherwise, he wouldn't have sacrificed his only son for me and you. The only thing that matters is that we love him with all our heart, mind and soul, and love others the same way. That is what he asks us, asks of us, which is a challenge, especially loving others in the same way. But if we want to be more Christ-like, that is what we need to do. And do not worry about all the other things in our life that can bring us to despair and questioning things. So pray and love, and you won't need to worry. God will be carrying you as well. Now let's pray. God told us not to be afraid, so let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for getting us through the good times and the worst times. Help those who struggle with their faith in their lives. Give them the strength they need to get through as you walk with them. Thank you, always bless. Thank you for always blessing us in our lives. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And I hope that you all will pray and realize that God loves you with all his heart and soul and mind, like we should him. Thank you, Betsy. Okay. Isn't it a powerful testimony? 
sometimes the people have a thermometer faith. So their faith shows whether God is with them or not. But sometimes the people have a thermostat faith. That means their faith can adjust to the situation's lows and high to make it stable. So Betty shows today thermostat faith. It's not a thermometer, goes up and down like happy and sad. So I hope that uh, you all can have that kind of testimony. And I wait for someone else's story for the next Sunday or the following Sunday or the following Sunday. So we can support each other with our stories. We have read some of David and we learned a lot from David, but we have also many teachers in our congregation. So you can share your books and movies but also you can share your life stories to inspire others. So in that way, let us glorify God together. Okay, I will bless you and let's pray together. Thank you God for this wonderful testimony that you share with us today through Betsy McLeod. She has gone through grief and financial crisis and all the life challenges. But she have come so far with you because you have walked with her. Now help all our congregation, church members, and people who worship with us online to find out their faith stories and help them to share their stories to show to the world how wonderful you are and help us to be a channel of your blessings. We pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. the time that we come to you and ask you to become a part of the mission and ministry of Concord United Methodist Church. We have so many things that we are doing in the community by lifting up um, our testimony. Thank you, Betsy. Lifting up our services where we uh, serve food, we deliver blankets, but we can't do that, of course, without um, financial support. So please mail in your check to Concord United Methodist Church at 1645 West Street, Concord, California, 94521. You can send that to, or do that through Venmo also, and enter Concord-UMC. Online, um, you can visit uh, ConcordUMC.org and click on our YouTube link, and Pastor Lee has a video where he's hosting and, and explaining how to give online. You can do online pay through your bank. I am doing that more and more and it makes everything convenient. I don't have to worry about it. So find ways that you can give. And if you can't give, please pray. Just pray for our church and pray for the members of our church and the community around us. But your giving means so much to that effort. God be with you as you discern how to give.
It's now time for prayers of the people, but I forgot to throw this out there in the mission ministry. I apologize for the uh, town hall discussion on dismantling racism. Pressing on to freedom is August 19th at 12 p.m. Central Time and also August 26th at 12 p.m. Central Time. Michelle, did you want to add anything on that? No, I just want to say discipleship. Thank you, Valerie. Uh, discipleship Ministries is a connectional office uh, in Nashville of the United Methodist Church. And we as a conference, along with Bishop Carconia, have partnered with them to dismantle racism. And so this is a way for you to learn about the ways in which we plan to do that. And please continue to go to the conference website uh, there is a group of us that are going to be doing some things locally that you can participate in as well. Racism is a sin. Let's dismantle it together. Thank you. And now on to our prayers. We have some joys. Michelle's godson, Caleb, is five years old. Happy birthday, Caleb. Um, a happy birthday shout out to John's mom, my mother-in-law, Sharon Oreda Garcia. We love you. Happy birthday, mom. Also a joy, Jessica Howe, now a resource specialist at Metal Home School. Congrats, Jessica. And then um, prayers for Michelle's friend, Joan, who is battling stage four cancer. Really need prayers for more time for her. Also prayers that Javier, my son-in-law, makes it here from Germany on time for the birth of uh, their baby girl. Prayers also for Irene Karpoff, Ken's mom. Prayers for healing from a heart attack. Also prayers for Al Carlson, from Al Carlson. Prayers for safe travels to see Joey, who's also celebrating a birthday. But more importantly, also his girlfriend is pregnant and they are due in December. So congratulations there and congrats to be a grandpa soon, Al. And then prayers of healing for Kathleen Gregory, who had knee surgery Tuesday and started physical therapy. So continue prayers for her to no pain and keep on going and getting better. And as always, remember our military, keep them safe out there and be with all those that are shut in and have no outside contact during this COVID time. We just really need a lot of love, prayers, patience and healing out there. Let us pray together. Thank you, God, for all those wonderful prayer requests about birthdays and babies and new lives. When we are sheltering in place alone, many times we feel that life stops and everything is still pictures. However, when we actually look around and listen carefully, young Joy is going to be a father in December, and our Carson is going to be grandfather. They pray for the new life, and also Jeff Rios, they are going to see them. So allow all of us to have a safe travel when we go to see our family while coming back, like Javier, who comes from Germany. Lord, so many young people are now beginning their new careers like Jessica Howe. Lord, bless all those new babies and young people and five years old who just had birthday. Our Michelle Pops, Gus, and Caleb, Lord, so many birthdays and celebrations. We now know that life is going on and you blessed us with full of lives here and there. So we pray for your life first, going into all those people who are looking for healing and recovery. Remember your daughter, Kathleen Gregory. And remember Jones, who is fighting against cancer Give her more time to meet the friends and reflect on the life. Lord, we pray for those who are looking for job, our Carson. And Lord, we pray for those who are 
getting older, but still celebrating their life can Karpov's mother. So many people are now reflect on their lives in this time of COVID-19 and realize that every life is important and all lives matter. That's why Black Lives Matter. So help us to fight and dismantle the racism and help all of us to spread out your good news of equal opportunity and fairness among all the races and make us all one in your love. We pray this in the name of Jesus who taught us how to pray together, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. Our next hymn, Help Us Accept Each Other, United Methodist Hymnal, page 560. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of our God and the power and communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all who have found God again and again in life journey, in every challenge seen in crisis, ever and forever. Amen.